Hey, good afternoon. It's time for another Thinkorswim tip on how to set up a time-based range trade. I like trading range trades, which essentially is over a given period of time. In this case, we're going to be looking at a 15-minute range trade. These are five-minute bars, so the first three bars here, the darker blue denoting the opening of the pit session for crude oil at 8 a.m. in central time. We're going to look to trade breakouts of these ranges or fade the ranges. A breakout can either be a low breakout, in which case we're looking for price to break the low and then continue down to a target, and we'll also have a stop in place higher, or a high breakout, in which case price goes breaks above the high. We're looking for it to continue higher to our target, but we have a protective stop down below. The other trades are a high fade, in which case we'd see price come up to within a penny of the high of the 15 minute range, in which case then we'd go short. We are fading it. We don't want, we wouldn't go long. We're going to sell it, expecting it to, hoping for it to come back down and reach our target, but we'd have a protective stop above it. <coughs> then the converse trade is a low fade, where price would come within a penny of the low. We would get long, looking for a bounce and going up to our target but with a protective stop down below. Now the service that I use to help me with my range trading is called Investiquant. It's probability based trading. <clears throat> they provide probabilities and statistics for range trades as well as gap trades and some uh, other trades but specifically we're going to look at range trades. So today 15 minute range trade was favorable for a low breakout in crude oil today being July 20th 2015. So the probability was greater than 60 percent of a winning trade and the profit factor was greater than 1.15 profit factor meaning that's the gross wins divided by the gross losses. Now Investiquant uses uh, previous history what's happened in the same circumstances in other words what's happened overnight where did price close yesterday where has price closed now within the 15 minute range what was the range a number of different factors now you can see it's already later in the day um, so we're going to pretend make believe that uh, 5021 was the low of this 15 minute range so this was the fifth, first 15 minute range and this bar starts painting at 15.01 after the open here in central time it opens at 8 a.m. so at 15 at sorry at 8.15.01 this bar started about 20 to 30 seconds after uh, 8.15 Investiquant publishes the probabilities and I'm able to look at them and determine whether it meets my minimum criteria that of the 60% uh, probability and 1.15 profit factor to see whether I want to uh, put in a possible trade. Now today the low breakout was favored. Neither the low fade nor the high fade nor the high breakout were favored but the criteria of 60 and 1.15 were met for a low breakout. So that being the case what I would do is come up here make sure auto send is off template set to trigger with bracket and then I would come down here and I'm looking for a low breakout so I want to sell should it break the low by a penny so I would left click here up pops the order confirmation dialog box and I need to edit this to put in the appropriate stops and targets so limit is my target and in this case it's not a dollar that I'm going to be looking for although that would be nice but the criteria that we use, we use the five day average true range, which for crude oil on July 20th was $1.42. Our target is 20% of the average true range, five day, so 28 cents. So I've highlighted this, I'm gonna set it to 0.28, and then I hit enter to lock that in, and then our stop is 30% of the average true range, five day, which is 43 cents. So I highlight this again, put in 0.43, hit enter to lock it in. And now here, this is our basic trade. 
Um, now, if I click here to save it, which I will do, if I left click on this, I can save it as range trade. So we'll just put CL range trade. Now this template is saved and I can call it up whenever I want by clicking on the chart and using custom template. The other way to do this, so I'm going to delete this so that it's saved up here into this drop down, I have to physically do it in here. So let's change these up here. You'll see these are our brackets, so our limit, the trigger is, is set when we click on here, but this our limit is our profit target, so again that's the 0.28, and our stop is 43 cents, and it knows what direction we're going to, once we click either to sell or buy, it knows where to set these, either higher in stop for a short or lower in the case of a long trade. So we set that to the 0.43, hit enter. Now you'll see that the little three and a quarter inch floppy disk, which some of you may remember, has popped up here. And I can click on that and again give this a template name that will show up in this template drop down box. So here we'll just we'll call it something different. We'll call it CL range test, just so it's something different. So now I can show you that you can see it's now populated with that so if it were on anything else say OCO or trigger with bracket or it was on single whatever I can pop it up and scroll down and find my CL range test put that in there and it has now saved my offsets for my target and my stop this makes it much easier for so I don't have to go through this each time so tomorrow assuming that the average true range will have changed, I can just alter these numbers. I don't have to save it. I can save it again if I want, but I just alter these numbers, then come down and put you know, either long or short, depending on whether I'm fading uh, or I'm taking a break out to the long side or to the short side. That will determine which that is, but that's how I save that. Now, with these range trades, there are two range trades that I trade, a 15-minute range and a 60-minute range. So once the 60-minute range numbers come out, I don't care about the 15-minute range trade any longer if it hasn't triggered. If I'm already in the 15-minute range trade, then the 60-minute numbers don't matter to me because I haven't completed the, the trade that I'm in. But for this case, let's assume that we want to put in a time in force for our 15 minute range trade. In other words, I want this trade to be active and effective f until 8.55 or five minutes before the 60 minute range numbers come out. So to do that, I come over here, remember low breakout is what we're looking for today. So I would click on this on the left side to go short. It brings up our order confirmation dialog. Now I'm gonna edit the order confirmation and you'll see that it's brought it up. Here's our, I changed it, but I can change it back to 28 cents and the 43 cents as we had. So here it is, ready to go. But I wanna add a time and force. So what I can do in here, I come over to the gear on our initial order and I click on that. That brings up this these order rules. Now, as I want to re reiterate, which I haven't iterated at all yet, that the auto send needs to be unchecked. If auto send is checked, then as soon as you click, either in the ask side or the bid side, that order is in effect, and you'll have to uh, cancel it. So, to bring up these order dialog boxes and the order rules, <clears throat> we need to have auto send unchecked. So what we want to do here, as soon as we confirm and send back down here, once we've got the order rules in, submit, we want that to go in immediately. So we don't need to do anything with that, but we do want to cancel the order at a specified moment. So I click on that, and in this case, since it's the 15 minute range, we would want that to cancel at 8.55 or five minutes before the 60 minute range numbers come out in the central time zone, Chicago time zone. So I've done that. Be sure and hit enter 
to lock it in and then click OK. So now this order, <clears throat> if it trades within the range, doesn't, doesn't break the low by a penny. If it trades higher or continues on higher, then 50, at 8.55 this order will automatically cancel and go away. And then I'll look for the 60 minute uh, numbers to see if, if there's a trade there that I will need to enter. The other thing that I like to add to these is an end of day exit. So how do I do that? The first thing I have to do is unlock the lock. You'll see over here at advanced order there's a lock and it's red. So I need to left click on that. It opens up green so that means I can make changes. Then here to the left of the last line future there's a blue dot. I'll left click on that and I want to create a duplicate order. It adds another OCO order to this. So now I'd have three orders. But you can see it says I can't, I, I've got to have something different in here. All it did was duplicate that. So I can't have that same thing. And what I really want to do is exit this trade at the end of the day, should it enter the trade, not hit my stop, not hit my target before the end of the day. So what I want to do then is create a market order to tell it close the order. It's the end of the day. Let's close this out so we are flat going into the overnight. So I come over here to where it says stop. I click on market. Okay. If it has market in here, it will just execute immediately and it won't even let us do that. So plain market order may not be part of an OCO group. So what I have to do over here is again come to the cog, the gear, left click on that to bring up our order rules box again. Now this one it's not that I want to cancel this market order, it's that I want to submit it if, if the target and the stop have not been hit. I want to close this order five minutes before the end of, end of day, which for crude oil in, in the central time zone is at 2.30. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to put it in in military time, 14.25, whoops, can't be point. 14, 25, 0, 0, hit enter to lock it in and click OK. So now I have my conditions in. I've got my initial short order to get short. Once that's filled, these open, uh, these uh, one cancels others will all be active. Have my target at 28 cents, have my stop 43 cents higher because we're going short, remember, and then a market order to close it out if uh, if the trade hasn't hit the stop or the target before the end of the day. Should it hit a stop or target? Should it hit the target first? Then these other two orders will cancel. Should it hit the stop? Then these other, then the market order and the target order will, will cancel. So let's do confirm and send and look at what it's telling us. It's always a good idea until you get really comfortable with us to look at this. So sell one at 5020. You can see assuming that this was 15 minutes, we were 15 minutes into the trading day or just past 15 minutes, and we assume that 5021 is the low of the day, that 5020, one tick below, and we want to get short. Once that order is filled, then this is triggered limit order 28 cents to close it. And it says to open, but once this is filled, so that will that's our profit target. 43 cents above it is our stop. And then this is an end of day to close the order off. Shows you the commissions, what the buying power effect is for this one trade. Cost nearly $5,000 in uh, margin to be able to make this trade, blah, blah, blah. So then we would hit send. In fact, we'll do it. And the order goes in. Well, it doesn't. Oh, I know why. Normally it would go in, but it, it didn't because uh, because the cancel time, it was past the cancel time I put in for our initial trade. But that is how you set up that order. So um, again, so we had canceled the range test. I mean, uh, pardon me, the uh, crude oil range test is our template to bring this up. The other way you could do it, since we saved it down below and we had it here in the, in the order entry box, if you right click on the chart, we right click here, we can come down to Cell Custom. Of course, these are always in here with OCO bracket, but we saved it as 
crude oil 15 minute range. So we pop that in and it brings us up because we don't have auto send on. Pops this up and we can go back in. We would come in here and well, it's, it saved that because we already had it in there. Um, and the same thing with our end of day. Now the only problem with these, when you save it with the times in here, is that it's saved with the date that you actually saved the trade. So your order would get rejected and you'd be asking, why is this order getting rejected? It's because you would be you know, a day further in time. So if I tried to bring this order up tomorrow, which it would pop up, it would open up, but it would still have 720, so I'd have to come in here and change it to 721. Say okay, and do the same thing for my time and effect order here. I'd have to change this to that date, which you may find that easier to do. So that would be several things you'll have to you would have to change uh, each day if you saved it in this save this full template with the uh, end of day market order as well as the time and force. So I hope that's clear. Uh, if you have any questions or there's something else you'd like for me to explain in, on the Thinkorswim platform, please put it in the uh, description below. I'll put in a description of the uh, of InvestiQuant, how to get to them, check them out. And um, I ask you to subscribe and like this if it was helpful. And you guys have successful trading. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.